what better way to brighten up our days than to make a lovely snow globe tree ornament. So I'm going to show you how. First of all, you need a few things. I've got my sharp scissors and my sew line glue pen. That's going to come in very handy. I've got some needles for hand sewing because there is a bit of hand sewing involved in this project. I've got my EPP thread that I like to use, but any hand sewing thread is absolutely fine. I've got some sparkly thread because why not? It's Christmas. And some trims like sparkly ribbon. I've got some sequins. Festive glitter. If you don't have any trims, you could repurpose something. That bell with the ribbon was on the chocolate. I've got some sparkly wick rack and a little holly leaf. To give the piece some stability, I'm using Hexiform and I'll leave a link to that below. I'll also leave a link to the pattern below with all the measurements in and very brief instructions, as well as the templates that you can print out and cut out. You'll also need a piece of vinyl, but if you don't have any, see if there's something that you can reuse or repurpose, some thin plastic that you could sew through on a sewing machine. You need some Christmas fabrics and, like I said, print out the templates and cut them out. There are only three pieces, so it's nice and straightforward. If you're using the hexi form, now it's time to cut out your pieces from the pattern in the hexi form. And to do this, I just add a dab of glue to the back of my shape just to hold it in place so it doesn't slip about. I find this is easier than pinning it. And then I just take my scissors and cut it out. You need to cut two globe shapes out and two of each of the other pieces. You also need to cut the globe shape out just once from the vinyl. Now place your hexiform globe fuzzy side down on your fabric and cut it out leaving a seam allowance of about half an inch or a little bit less. And now glue base just like you would with ordinary English paper piecing. Just adding a line of glue just a little bit away from the edge and then gently folding over the side and pressing it down to create a nice curved shape. You might want to give it a press with an iron at this stage just to keep it nice and flat. So once you've done the front of your globe, then you now need to do the back piece. And now you need to just glue base the remaining four pieces. You'll notice on the pattern that it says merry and bright on one of the rectangles. And that's so you can add a little bit of embroidery. And if you wish to do that, then transfer the Merry and Bright writing onto your fabric before you glue baste it around the hexi form. I haven't done that for this decoration, but I'll show you a little bit more about the embroidery later on. You'll notice you have two tails sticking up on the piece that has the slanted sides. So what I do is I just add a bit of glue to the back and then I bend it down and try and keep that point nice and pointy and then those bits won't get in your way. Now I'm 
going to find the centre of my globe and sandwich the ribbon in between the two halves of the globe. And again I just used the glue to hold it in place as it's just temporary. Before I stitch the two halves together I'm just using some clips to hold it in place. I like these wonder clips, I think they work really well. They're really great for this project. And now it's time to thread your hand sewing needle. And to join the two halves together I'm just doing a plain and simple whip stitch. Just using a very fine thread so it won't show up. But you could actually use a decorative stitch if you wished. You could blanket stitch them together. It just depends on what look you're going for with your decoration. But a nice simple whip stitch is just fine for this. And I'm just whip stitching all the way around the entire edge of the piece to seal it all up together. Now when you come to the bit where the ribbon is, you can't whip stitch that part. So I'm just taking some tiny stitches from the front to the back and then from the back to the front again and um, because the thread is so fine they just really won't show up but I have a plan for something to put over the top of that bit anyway just to hide anything. You'll see that later on. So once that's complete now it's time to whip stitch the other two pieces together, so the rectangular piece and the piece with the slanted edges. So again, just like you would with regular EPP, I'm just lining up the straight edges and I'm just doing a simple whip stitch to join them together. And just repeat this for the other pair. Next, find the centre of both pieces by folding them in half and just giving them a little crease so that you can line them up. And it helps if you have these clips just to hold it in place. And then again, do a whip stitch right along that edge. You're going to start about a quarter of an inch in because the top piece does stick out a little bit from the edge. You'll see that when it's complete. So I mentioned before about embroidery and if you transferred the merry and bright lettering design onto your top rectangular piece then now is the time to embroider that before we put the back on the whole piece. I'm doing teeny tiny back stitches to stitch this lettering and I'm just using a 12 weight thread in a nice red colour, really festive and it's lovely to do and I have the hexiform there, so it's really nice to stitch into. But I decided not to do the embroidery on this piece, and I really like the way it looks like this as well. So either way is really nice. So now it's time to add the vinyl, which we cut out earlier on. And again, I'm just going to use my wonder clips just to hold it in place. And then I'll show you how I stitch this on the sewing machine. So I just pick a corner to start sewing from and I'm just sewing as close to the edge as I can get all the way around. It's about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, just as close as you can get. I'm just using an ordinary standard needle and standard foot, nothing fancy, and it sews through those layers and sews through the vinyl with no problem at all. 
Now you need to make sure that you sew about three quarters of the way around and then you need to stop and leave a gap open so that you can then fill it with glitter and sequins or whatever you want. So I'm stopping and I'm tying off my thread here and then I'm going to lift the needle and move my presser foot about an inch and a half to two inches away and then carry on sewing again. I've made sure I've tied off my thread there so that nothing's going to come undone and I'm going back to the start and as you can see I sewed all the way around and left that gap there for the glitter and sequins. So now it's the glittery fun bit where you can go wild and put whatever you want inside your snow globe. I'm going to put some snowflake sequins and some Christmas tree sequins inside mine and then I'm going to add some glitter but you can put whatever you want in there and I can't wait to see what other people make and the ideas that you come up with. So let me know if you make one of these, let me know in the comments, send me an email, let me know on Instagram what you make, send me a photo. I would absolutely love to see all the brilliant ideas that you come up with. So now the glitter's been added, you need to sew that opening shut because we don't want anything to fall out. And once that's done, we're ready to add the finishing touches. And I'm going to sew this little holly leaf here to cover up those stitches. They didn't really show anyway, but I think it adds a nice touch. And I'm just using some sparkly silver thread because why not? So now I'm just putting some of the sew line glue along that top seam because I'm going to just put the rip rack along there and the glue holds it in place for me to stitch it. So I just press it down along there. I'm not going to put it on the back, I'm just having it on the front. So I just put it down and make sure there's a little bit extra to overlap around the back. So now I'm just using some silver thread to stitch the rip rack in place. I'm just making some tiny stitches all the way along. So now that's done, it's time to add that back piece to the back and to cover up any little threads and things and the last bit of the rick rack those ends just tuck them in there you could of course have the rick rack going right round if you wish but I decided just to save that little extra piece and use it on another one perhaps so again I'm just holding it in place with the clips and then I'm going to whip stitch all the way around And there it is, it's finished, it's all complete and ready to hang on your tree when you put your tree up. Our tree isn't up yet but I'm really hoping it will be soon as I have this decoration and I also made the other one which I showed you before that has the embroidery on. So I'm super super excited to hang those up. I also have a couple more tree decorations designed and I'm hoping to bring those to you next week as I'm hosting a little sew along with Miss Leela of The Maker's Stash and we're doing that on Instagram so if you'd like to join us please hop on over to Instagram and share what you make using our patterns and our patterns are free 
and the hashtag is EPP Xmas Ornament Sal and I'll pop that on the screen now because it is quite long and yep yeah, I'd love it if you joined in with us but if you don't that's absolutely fine please feel free to make these patterns and have a lovely festive time and I'll see you next week thanks so much bye